Hey, g'day. I'm on light duties recently uh, due to health issues. Uh, nothing life threatening, nothing that serious. It just means I can't bend or lift heavy weights uh, for the next few months. But that's good. It's Australia's summer, so I'm not going to go out rock hunting anyway. Uh, but it just means I can't really sort of lift buckets of rocks and do all the sort of stuff that I'd normally do. I'll probably cut some, end up cutting some in the next few days and then polishing them. So I'm sure I'll be able to do that. But yeah, to fill in, I thought, you know, some videos, I thought I might show you some of my buckets I have out of the rocks that I've collected outside here. Um, so that's what this video will be about. Hey, g'day. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Feel free to leave a comment if you want and click on like. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks. All right, so here we go. Enter the great outdoors of Australia. Holy cow, it's hot. All right, here we go. Um, I will quickly, most rocks look better wet, so let's give them a quick spray. What these are here is just some of the nicer rocks from the collection. I just put them there so that when I come outside I can view them. They're either nice or, nice or interesting. <laughs> um, I just think they look good. Makes me feel good when I come out and look at them. Uh, so I'll put them down and then move on to the buckets. So these are smaller buckets. These are uh, about 10 litres I think. Mind you, there's not a lot in this one. So opalite. Opalite's a bit of an odd term that we call it. What we call opalite is common opal, which is a green common opal with dendrites in it. But a company started making fake opals and they call it opalite. So it sort of clashes with what we have traditionally called opalite for years. Uh, this one, there's not much in here either. This is rhodonite. There's still enough to work with. I'm sure I'll get some nice clump of stones out of this patch. Um, again, I'm, I'm wetting them just to show the colours you can expect to see once they're polished. So road night's beautiful. This is a very bright pink. You can get duller ones. I think it may even fade um, in some of Moss opalite. So this is uh, common opal again, but it has mossy sections in there. It doesn't mean there's moss in there. It's just those... Um, Although there is moss there, <laughs> that is actual moss on moss opalite, but the moss opalite refers to those dark shapes in there. Um, they kind of look like moss. Now, Chrysocolla, I'm not totally, yeah, I'm fairly sure this is Chrysocolla. This is something I found at the price. Matt just had a question mark with check here, and I checked there, and this is what I found. It's reasonably soft, which is consistent with Chrysocolla, so that's what I'm calling it Chrysocolla. Yeah, tiger iron. Everyone knows about tiger eye. Um, this is tiger iron. So it's basically banded iron with uh, lines of tiger eye. You can see the reflective bits, the gold reflective bits in there. It's a tiger eye, but just bands of it, small bands in amongst all the jasper and banded iron. Who's next? Chrysoprase. Now, chrysoprase is a beautiful rock. This isn't. Uh, Actually, it's not other than not the best examples. Um, uh, it's actually sometimes known as Australian jade. You can see why in that piece there. But yeah, if you can get a nice pure piece, just pure colour, it's a magnificent rock. Quite priced as well. Now, right onto the bigger buckets. Burrow rock. Now, this was a rock that I discovered um, heading down from Coolgardie. I needed to take a toilet break. And as I was taking my toilet paper, I found these nice rocks. I followed a seam and ended up getting this stuff here. So it is opalite. I think with um, agate sections as well, there's like druzy pockets in there. Um, so yeah, very happy to find that. Uh, amethyst, everyone knows amethyst. Beautiful purple rock. <clears throat> um, yeah, what can I say? It's just a magnificent colour. Everyone knows what amethyst is. And these aren't prime examples again, but there's enough there to work with. And I've got two buckets of it, so more than enough. Tiger Eye, and this is uh, the same exact Tiger Eye we saw, but bigger sections, although that bit at the top there isn't. 
But this here is typical of tiger eye. It has what they call chatoyancy. Chatoyancy is that reflectiveness uh, that you see. It's actually um, asbestos that's been really compressed uh, and changes the formula so it's no longer dangerous. Various jaspers. Um, anything that I think is a jasper, <laughs> whether it is or not, gets chucked into that bucket just because they're nice and colourful, something I can work with down the track and know where to find in various jaspers. Um, Brescia, oh, there's no real Brescia in here. This is mainly picked to Jasper. Uh, I took a bit of Brescia out and put in a bucket next to it. Um, so picked to Jasper, well, basically it's a Jasper that looks sort of like it could form a picture. You can make little, like clouds, you can sort of form pictures out of what you're seeing. Uh, quite a nice rock. Now this is the Brescia. The Brescia is basically Brescia-ed Jaspers and Chirp. The Brescia meaning it's been broken up and then over the the eons, it remineralizes back into a single rock, but you can see all the broken up sections that make it up. Hey, yeah, that's fresh, yeah. Norena Jasper. Norena Jasper is a fantastic rock. Um, very different than anything else. The way it forms, the colors are always the same. You get this brick red, you get this gray, and you get this mustard yellow color. Always, those same three colors. Uh, very different patterns every time. What have we got here? Well, this is some banded iron. Um, these are the yellow ones. I, I've sort of got another bucket with red banded iron as well. So, BIF, banded iron formation, is how a lot of people would know it. It's a jasper with bands of iron. You can see that grey band of iron running through there. Now, what have we got here? Mikathera opalite. Okay, so this is another map someone gave me with a question mark. Check this out. So I went there and I found this here. So it's white opalite, common opal, with dendrites running through it. I haven't worked any of this yet, but I have grand plans for that. I think it's going to look good. Very nice. The, the dendrites run all the way through. Praise. So you get chrysoprase. This is praise. So basically, praise is the non-translucent version of chrysoprase. That's my understanding. Um, but again, it polishes really well. It has nice texture running through it. It's always green. That's praise. Who is next? What is this? This is <laughs> random, random interesting rocks. <laughs> Another bucket I can just go to and say, oh, all right, what have we got in there? Isn't that weird? It's sort of agate the way it's formed. Uh, you see the agate bands, but I don't think it is. It sort of seems to be more of a, I don't know, a shirt or jasper. All right, now this is dendritic opalite. I ran out of room on that label there, right? <laughs> opalite, but it's common opal. Uh, opalite. Comes in many colors. The dendrites, dendrites are those branches running through it. These are beige brown colours. A dendrite, uh, apparently, I've been told, is Greek for tree or branch. Um, so you see how it gets its name. It's like these little branches running through this common opal. It comes in lots of colours. This one's yellow, a bit of green here on top there. Um, so this bucket's full of yellow and green dendritic opalite. Nice green colour, not so much dendrites, but yeah, nice green. So yeah, that's dendritic opalite, I've got a lot of that. Now, the, up this far end, we have the Mookite. Uh, Mookite is only found in one place on Earth, and that's Gascoigne Junction, in Western Australia. Um, so yeah, basically, these are all yellow-toned Mookite. Predominantly yellow, there's obviously that grey bit there, and then white. Um, this one here is... <laughs> look at that. Like a cake. But yeah, um, Mukai, fantastic. A wide variety of colours and patterns. These are mainly reds. Reds with a bit of yellow. That's what most people think of, I think, when they hear Mukai. It's going to be yellow and it's going to be red. But it comes in so many more colours. Um, brush out. We, we spoke about brush out earlier. That just means it's been broken up, usually through earthquake or even meteor strike will break up the rocks. And then given enough time, Minerals seep back in and join it back up into one rock again. So you can see all the broken pieces that have reformed into a, a rock. Whole bucket full of it there. Various mood guide from the first place I went to. So uh, yeah, just like it says, various colours, various patterns, which is what you get in mood guides. Great rock. Don't know whether I mentioned that already. <laughs> um, now this here. This is from a place that I discovered. It's probably about 300 kilometres from Mooka Creek. 
<clears throat> I don't even know if it's actually mukite. I've called it mukite because the colours of the rocks are very similar to what mucca is, mukite is. But then it's divided up by those um, that brown, what would you call it, matrix that sits in. Peanut wood, another rock from the Gascon Junction region. There's a very interesting story about how it formed, which I'm not going to go through right now, but um, it's basically petrified wood that has worms or uh, clam larvae that burrow into it and create these white areas um, once it all you know, mineralizes over millions of years it becomes those white areas who's next here? <laughs> another mixed interesting jaspers well I suspect there's some jaspers that are not jaspers in here this one here is snakeskin jasper um, from what I understand there's two different types of Snakeskin jasper, that's one. The other looks more scaly. Now this here, I expect that's opalite in with jasper as well. Doesn't that look nice? Looking forward to working that one as well. Who do we have next? Agates. agates. These are basically parts of agates. Uh, I have whole agates underneath. Um, yeah, so this looks like, this is the waterline agate I suggest. Um, <coughs> so yeah, just water formed over time, layering down like sediments, basically, but in an agate. Um, this is more your typical agate where it forms around the perimeter of the inside of a hollow. Um, yeah, a lot to work with there too. Quartz, fairly common, especially around where we are. Um, a lot of quartz. This is almost amethyst, this one. See little purple tints, especially on the end there. But yeah, quartz, very common. All right, so who's next? <clears throat> crazy lace agate. I have way too much crazy lace agate. I've got five buckets of it. The thing is, it's not all nice. Some of it can look a bit average. Some of it can look absolutely spectacular. But what I should do is go through uh, what you can see there. Signs of it being crazy lace agate, but nothing special. This is big right here. You're stuck in my bucket. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Get it <in and> out. <laughs> um, yeah, like I'm saying, um, that's better that one, isn't it? You get some good stuff and you get some pretty average stuff. So I need to go through and sort out the good from the bad or the good from the average. Put all the good stuff into a, a bucket so I know where to look in the future. So yeah, Crazy Lace Agate. That was from up near Parabadu, I think. Yeah, it's not too bad that one. Uh, so that's pretty much all my buckets. Uh, a few little bits and pieces on the fence here, just again because it makes me feel good when I come out and see them. I need them a quick squirt. Look at that. So, all these rocks I've just shown you, pretty much all, except for maybe the rhodonite and the green opalite, are for sale. If you'd like some, uh, let me know, message me. Let me know what you want, and I'll let you know a price. 